Okay, hey everybody. Uh, this is Brett. Sorry for the slight delay of getting started. Had to down re-download my background graphic here, and um, so uh, we're going to dive into we'll cover some news here. I know we haven't done the crypto mastery class in a couple of weeks. Kind of letting summer play out. We've got a lot to talk about here today, and uh, we'll cover that in just a minute. So just want to give you guys a quick wave. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. So uh, bear with me here. I've got to click one more button, but welcome. We're going to cover the news. We're going to cover also the Crypto Mastery indicators, what they're telling us, huge new singles, uh, signals firing. So if you're wondering which way the markets are going to go from here, we have some great clues using two of our top indicators. So with that, why don't we go ahead and uh, dive in. With that, I'll just go ahead and share my screen. And um should be able to see my screen here and also me in the corner. So, all right, let's talk about this. So basically the big news is, you know, and before we dive into any of this other stuff, everyone's waiting for the CPI numbers coming out tomorrow. So, um, you know, there's some clues in the charts. Um, you've heard me say a hundred times, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. And just to hop over here into this other screen, not that one, but where did that go here? So basically this is the, the biggest news. Bitcoin's waiting the US CPI print as the options Markets also seeing some uh, movement there, sort of telegraphing where things could go. Uh, we have to realize that Bitcoin is now a Wall Street product and a lot of influences involved, options and derivatives, futures, and now the ETF. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about a study that I did. I think we've discovered something using the IBIT four-hour chart which I've been publishing here on TradingView. You can always follow me here on TradingView. Just Google Brett Fogel on TradingView, and I do these periodic studies. And one of them recently um, I was proposing, which we'll pull up here in a minute, that the four-hour IBIT uh, gaps, much like the CME gaps, have been filling 100% of the time. And one of my videos here went sort of viral based on this here, 218 likes here. Uh, I cover that. I cover some other fractals. But uh, very interesting, the last gap, has now filled. So I'll just replay this study from August 14th, two weeks ago, where I suggested we would come down here in the IBIT because of this final unfilled gap right here. We saw this big gap that did push up and fill, but this last remaining gap so we were pushing higher, thought we were going to go into break and hit the new all-time highs, retest that. But let me hit play, and I'll just show you what happened. And if we watch this, we can see in real time the price has come down on the IBIT, and it filled that gap. Uh, right back down in here. And so uh, that's given us a, a very telling signal here. Actually, something's wrong with this price here. It's on the one hour for some reason. On the four hour, it did come down on this range. Something's a little wonky on that. I'll pull up the live chart, you guys. Sometimes these playbacks don't always work uh, like they're supposed to. Uh, so just a little bit of suspense. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to cover the news first. And um, here's some other uh, it's, so here's here's actually a more recent one. Let's look at this. So I'm not leaving you guys hanging. So here's that gap. If I hit the play button, this should be a four hour. And sure enough, we saw this come down and fill the gap right here. You see this green circle? Uh, that is where I proposed we'd fill the gap. And we did come down and fill this gap. And so what's interesting, actually, and this is not bullish, and I'm glad we're starting out with this, because right now the, there's a gap right down here from about 12 hours ago. So this would signal we're going to come back down again. And uh, so 100% of these gaps are filled. Uh, no one else is talking about this. I think I'm the first to recognize this is a leading indicator because, again, Wall Street product, uh, the CME gaps tend to fill for a variety of reasons. And the gaps form, just so everyone's on the same page, when after hours trading, either after 4 p.m. during the week or during the weekend, Wall Street's closed. So when price suddenly gaps up or down, these gaps tend to fill on the CME. CME gaps has been the thing for, you know, does 20 years, 30 years, as long as the CME has been around. So what I'm proposing is a similar type of phenomenon is happening with these uh, four hour IBIT gaps. And so what I'm seeing right now, and we'll pull it up on a live chart, is this would indicate that we come back down and retest. Uh, so whereas our other signals are bullish, we do have this contraindicator right now. So that's a big clue we're going to look at, but I do want to get to the news and cover that. And uh, if you have any questions, I see some questions coming in and uh, we'll get to those in a minute. By the way, if you're watching the replay of this, you can sign up for these classes at our website, moonstream.io. You can find out all of our services there. 
and including some of our free services down at the bottom. I'll show you that. If nothing else, sign up for our free crypto newsletter. It goes out every Monday. Uh, we do a good job of sending that out. The team puts that together. It goes out every Monday. You can sign up for these live trainings, which are free on Tuesdays. We do news. We do. We show your indicators. We talk about what I'm seeing in the markets. And you can also download this trader success checklist, which we may do today, as well as some other useful information. Certainly, you can find out more about our services as well, our monthly newsletter where we give a coin pick. We have the Crypto Mastery Indicators and the Pro Indicators, which is what we're going to talk about today showing you some of those clues we see uh, which direction the market could take from here. Uh, M3 Active Trader is much like this class, a lot more in depth where I give trade recommendations. So if you like what you're seeing today, you can learn more about that at M3. Active Trader here, our retire rich inner circle is more of a longer term view for those buy and hold hodlers that will wanna buy the next future Netflix and Amazons of the crypto world. And for those of you, if any of you uh, would like some one-on-one -on -one help, uh, those are, I do some private client work for people typically with six figures or more or in crypto that want help optimizing their portfolio for the bull run. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, let's dive in here and talk about some of the news. This is from today, Cointelegraph, what's happening in crypto today. And, you know, again, everything's waiting sort of for these CPI numbers, which are due out tomorrow, and then PPI out on Thursday. Uh, I have some theories about this. And, of course, the FOMC meetings coming up next week. Uh, and is it next week or the week after? I'll have to double check that. But uh, I do think we'll, well, there's a good chance we'll see a surprise rate cut of half a point. I think uh, the Fed realizes they waited too long. And uh, so they've priced in 100% chance of a rate cut, uh, but either 20, either 25% or 50. And it's starting to grow in chances. We'll look at the Fed FOMC FedWatch tool that the number for a 50 percentage point or half basis point rate cut is increasing. So we'll see what happens. I do think we could see a rally into that and maybe a sell the news event. And then October, we see a rip roaring bull market. September is usually a down market seasonally, so we have to keep that in mind. All right, so basically, uh, we take a look at some of this. I don't want to dive into things like DeFi and NFTs in this. Uh, today's class is really about what's happening in the overall macro markets that will move the markets in the uh, coming weeks and months. So certainly, the upcoming U.S. presidential election is going to be a hot topic. And uh, so, and of course, the debate is tonight. I think a lot of people are waiting on that to see how that goes. Uh, either side could blow it. Um, although um, I, I don't, I'm not going to talk about politics. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a. a uh, I would say that there's a single issue vote for many crypto investors, and the fact that RFK has joined Trump's team is uh, would be uh, decidedly bullish for crypto, and uh, would indicate less regulation in certain terms of uh, what we've been seeing with the SEC and uh, Mr. Donald Trump at the Bitcoin conference in Nashville. I was there. He said he would fire Gary Gensler on day one. Obviously, everyone loved that. I was uh, uh, very impressed by RFK's speech, and both very pro Bitcoin. So, uh, so that that is, you can see that in the betting markets at. I think it's some. Um, I can't remember the name of the site, Pro Market, or uh, one of these. That uh, when uh, this market seems to be moving lockstep with uh, the chances of a Trump win in the presidential election. So, like, uh, we're not going to get into it deeper than that. Uh, but that is uh, kind of what people are keeping their eye on. So, um, you know, there's more regulation here, fines imposed on crypto companies, uh, imposed by the SEC. I've risen 3,000% last year. I mean, guys, we'd have to have, we have to have that turn and uh, and have the forces that are against this uh, go away if this is really going to become a a, a full-blown industry i think it will either way victor hugo said there's you know time uh, nothing can stop a, an idea whose time has come but they sure are trying it would seem so um and now and what's interesting too is uh, the crypto super PACs at some point had more money involved than the individual political parties. This is significant. So if you hadn't heard of that, crypto super PACs, which are political action uh, committees, are pouring money into the Senate races as well as, um, you know, supporting the presidential candidates. But um, yeah, th this is the, the TLDR. The crypto has become a U.S. election issue for the first time. And so, you know, adoption is happening. We all know that. But we sure are uh, getting tired of waiting around for that, aren't we? Um, this has caused many people to bleed out and just uh, lose hope. And that's usually, though, they, the, the analogy, it's darkest before the dawn. Certainly applicable here. 
And I think we are very, very close to uh, seeing something like that. But there are there are very two very opposing views, and we have to be nimble, and uh, we have to be careful. So with that in mind, let's keep uh, unpacking this a little bit. We've talked about that crypto and Bitcoin likely play a key role in the election, which I've covered, and you know, it coming down to regulation. And so. Let's see a new report by the Winklevoss twins, collectively, I call them the Winklevi, uh, who founded uh, Exchange Gemini. I like Gemini very much, by the way. Uh, I've yet to no benefit from saying that. And I um, think they have, uh, they're, they're, they're good people uh, over there. But anyway, um, so let's see, released on September 10th. Uh, what's the date, you guys? That's today. I, oh, it's September 10th already. Can you believe it? So that is a new one called the Global State of Crypto. I have not heard this. We uh, should probably unpack that and send that out. Maybe I'll cover that tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. And essentially, what did the survey say? Uh, the survey said, sounds like family feud. So the survey said, according to Gemini's findings, many as 73% of US respondents currently own crypto said that a candidate's stance on crypto would have some impact on their vote. Like I said, uh, it's a single issue vote. Uh, most of us will vote for our wallets, certainly uh, based on the economy and crypto. All right. So, uh, um, you know, we'll leave it there. Uh, we definitely, uh, as crypto investors, would prefer a crypto friendly regulatory environment. Yes, I think that's clear and um, not uh, all of this uh, regulation through enforcement that we've been seeing for years and years and uh, good old uh, Gary Gensler at the helm. All right. Um, let's see. We so so okay. Seventy three percent said people who own crypto said that the candidate stance would have some impact. Uh, only thirty seven percent saying that it would have a ma major impact. I'm surprised to hear that. Uh, so, um, but you know, there's other other issues involved. Obviously, I thought it was more of a single issue vote. We'll have to see. We'll have to see you guys. So let's see. It is suggesting the rising, the growing role of crypto in ongoing presidential campaigns in the U.S. Uh, and by the way, I don't have a, an agenda here, you guys. I am reading this for the first time as well. Uh, we we have the team pull uh, major news articles and we unpack it together here every Tuesday. And uh, we're going to spend about 20 minutes on the news and we're going to dive into some charts and I tell you exactly what I'm seeing in these markets and where we go from here, I believe. So uh, again, here, that's that TLDR quote. Uh, SEC crypto enforcement hits 4.7 billion. Um, you know they are really gunning for these. I think I think meaningful regulation is good. Uh, what is not good is unclear regulation, where the uh, companies like Coinbase have repeatedly met with the SEC, saying, "Tell us what to do. What are the rules?" And the SEC doesn't tell the rules, and then they come in and enforce it anyway. It's uh, it's, it's mind boggling. Regulars, 11 enforcement actions in 2024, 3,000% increase, and this is where they're fining all these companies, and uh, it's a money grab. I mean, but geez, you know, we would benefit more from the tax revenue by letting the horse out of the racing gates and let this thing run, for God's sake. All right, um, we have covered that. I don't want to get too far into this, as I said, but the SEC is uh, fewer enforcements with bigger fines. And of course, recently with um, Binance and CZ, uh, they also said he's not, not going to be allowed to run any crypto company in the future. So he's stepped down officially. Of course, he'll still be involved. But wow, that's not really being talked about. And a, and a pretty big fine, although uh, he's got plenty of money to pay the fine. And it does seem a bit like a money grab here uh, from the good old US of A uh, and the current uh, you, you know, um, regulatory environment. Try to be really careful to stay away from uh, you know, politically charged words like the current regime. Uh, and so we'll just, we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, at any rate, uh, this see Commonwealth Unity Fund, crypto focused pact funded by Gemini and Ripple Labs. Uh, spent more than 600000 on one. Um, we're not going to, I don't want to get too far into the local politicians, etc. But uh, it is interesting. It is interesting that these crypto super PACs are really uh, gunning for for this. I wonder, this is just a hypothesis, and, and I wonder if the powers that be are trying to regulate and uh, keep the profits down, keep the prices down of Bitcoin, et cetera, so that these super PACs don't have more money to throw at their favorite candidate. Uh, I don't know. That's that's certainly a um, interesting hypothesis because imagine if the super PACs generally they have a lot of Bitcoin from early early on, and if we were at a hundred thousand right now, they would have many more hundreds of millions to throw at their favorite candidate. So price suppression 
inform the powers that be may be part of their strategy. Um, certainly, you know, moving 20,000 migrants into a town that was typically pro uh, Republican so they can vote Democratic. You, you know, th these are real things that are happening, you guys. And, um, you, you know, this uh, it makes you sort of wonder who's really pulling the strings. Uh, but anyway, that's not what we're here for. Uh, we're here to make money in crypto. And we're going to uh, show, we take what the market gives us and see how the markets react to the news. We can't control the news. There's no point in trying to predict uh, the news, but I, I will submit that often there are clues in the charts, and uh, as we go through these, we're going to unpack that as soon as we get into the charts. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Elizabeth Warren, this is, this is, we're not going to get into that for sure. Okay, uh, let's talk about something else here congressional elections critical for crypto's future. So we're back to congressional elections. I guess this is a new budding issue because the last article talked about that a bit. Uh, also, and um, the industry is a mass historically large war chest and little bit. OK, so this is interesting. And I guess I was wrong on that. Um, the, it says little of it will be spent on the clash for the presidential title. And uh, that surprises me. Um, I had heard I had read something differently early on. And maybe that was just in terms of how much money they had accumulated. But it sounds like they're gunning for the uh the the congressional side so the question is why all right so fair shake there's a number of these this has 120 million and yeah exactly perhaps counterintuitively little of any of this historically large sum will be spent on the presidential clash between vp harris and former president trump um i don't know why that does it is counterintuitive so let's dig down into this it's almost all going down ballot senate house representatives and pit a crypto supporter against a tr traditional Senate uh, skeptic. So, you know what, it, could this be they're pricing in a Trump victory already? Uh, statistics are all over the board. And of course, 87.457% of all statistics are completely made up. Like I just made that one up. Uh, it's, it's hard to trust these things. Uh, so we, I'm not gonna highlight that. So way down, okay, here, why down ballot races matter? And I just want to find out why that this is such a big thing. I mean, you know, Congressional House, they do vote on different bills. So we want to keep uh, the regulatory, highly regulatory bills away. And, um, yeah, the support. It's, so basically, this does make sense. Recognizing U.S. needs to support innovation, and uh, and so we need that at the congressional and the House, the Senate level. Um, so, introduce future of structure of cryptocurrency and blockchain, and uh, and that's the focus. So okay, that does make sense. And um, you know, um, you know this article is very, very sort of thoughtfully written. The race to the White House always draws the biggest headlines, but the day-to-day -day policy battles for the industry largely have to be in Congress. Uh, is true, and and there used to be, you know, it has to be a majority, or, or nothing happens in Congress, which is traditionally what happens. So it does make sense to have to skew and uh, and to put dollars behind crypto favorable representatives uh, in the House and Senate. The people actually vote on these things. Okay, so not so counterintuitive after all. Likely trend continue for years. Uh, so this may be a slow battle to win. But uh, it appears to be uh, beginning in earnest. Okay, so the scale of crypto's corporate political spending is shocking. So Dominic Susan and political card. We're getting a little bit in the weeds here, you guys. Uh, I think we covered it. And all right, you guys, you can Google this. It's on Coin Telegraph uh, for more. I've got two more articles, and we're going to dive into the charts. And if you guys have questions, uh, hold those. I will answer those. Crypto traders remain cautious about downside risks in Bitcoin. Yeah, so so basically, uh, you, you know, I think we'll, we'll lead the charge as Bitcoin as it raises a Bitcoin dominance. And we haven't quite, we haven't yet broken 60% Bitcoin dominance. Generally that happens in the bull market. So I do think bull, uh, the bull run is led by Bitcoin and ETH and Sol, but I think more Solana than ETH just based on what I'm seeing. So this article says we need to remain cautious. But I also will remind us that 80%, this is a real statistic, not made up, 80% of all media is placed, either paid or somebody at the upper end says, I want to see articles about this. And uh, so we have to keep that in mind and, and read all of these with a bit of a grain of salt. And uh, you know, many of them go out on the press release news wires and then people who have connections, you know, the PR person who's getting paid says, hey, can you publish this article? You see where I'm going? 
All right, crypto traders remain cautious about downside risks. I mean, I do agree with this. Um, I'm, I think we get a bounce here, but uh, we have to clear the 21 and 50 day EMAs and get back above the 200 EMA. So we are in bearish, more bearish market structure, but we are seeing some bullish signs I wanna talk about as soon as we jump to the charts. Options tied to Bitcoin and Ether show a bias for puts, according to QCP Capital. Uh, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything necessarily, uh, because the masses are generally wrong. If there's too many people short, guess what happens? They'll they'll rally it up and cause the most pain as possible. But um, so we'll look at this. I think, um, but Sol looks really strong in terms of buyers. We can see that with our buy block indicator. Uh, which will be uh, visually up on the screen in a moment. So, you know, this is sort of mental entertainment, bias for puts, put call ratios, all that, but doesn't mean they're right. And doesn't mean if the bets are big enough that the other party, the counterparty, can't move the, the price uh, to wipe out these people because they don't want to pay out. The markets don't want to pay out money on, on, on puts and things. So a, a slight bearish position, we just don't know. All right, cautious sentiment for the FOMC, also true. Uh, we don't know for sure. If we get a quarter, pay, a quarter point rate cut, that's kind of a, uh, you know, you know, people have already priced that in. I think that would be a bearish sign, whereas a half point or, or potentially there's an outlier of a three quarter point cut, uh, but uh, we would have to see more deterioration. Certainly if the CPI is very negative tomorrow, then we could see a three quarter point hike. So. Let me pause for a second and just say, deep breath, everyone. We have to be ready for everything and be cautious going into this because surprises will happen. The only thing certain in these markets is uncertainty. And I think we just really have to wait for some confirmation of strength to be going all in. That's a TLDR. I'd rather buy Bitcoin at 75K, right, with, with an all-time high building support on the old resistance high. I would rather do that in many ways than be trying to bottom fish and catch the dip. Uh, the answer is I'm doing both, okay? But in reality, if we think Bitcoin can go to 150,000 with this cycle, which I believe it can, I'd rather buy into strength. So we'll look at that also. And also Sol, yeah, so I, as I said, Solana likely to remain more resilient than Ether. So you think might think I'm psychic here. I didn't see that headline, um, and I think maybe a little bit true, but I have, I like Sol a lot. We've been buying Sol, I've been buying Solana on the dips and uh, have some good fills, by the way, with some limit orders last week and a couple of weeks ago at 115, 120, 125, 130. Um, so we'll show you that in a minute. A uh, huge, huge uh, innovation with our new uh, buy and sell block indicator that shows where all the buy orders are. And uh, invariably, we see prices when they dip, they dip into that mid range. I just released a list of 40 altcoins and buy prices to go shopping on the next dip in our retire rich community. I can learn more about that on our website, but that's so uh, we just released 40 coins that I think have the highest potential from 20%, 25%, 40%, even 100x potential gains and where to buy those. So you can sign up at our Retire Rich class, uh, go to our website, moonstream.io for more information and to watch a video. Okay, uh, this is all noise here, just skimming through. I want you guys to want to make good use of our time together and your time as well. Saul seen is relatively resilient, as I was just saying, and we can see that on the, uh, I'm on my remote headset here, uh, and uh, we can see that in the charts. So we'll get to that. All right, last news article, and then we'll dive into the charts and uh, get to your questions. Why Bitcoin will likely retrace to 54K before the big breakout? Well, this would coincide with the, the next gap fill on the IBIT. This is an emerging signal that we first released, I first released and talked about in our M3 Active Trader class. So uh, again, you can find out more about that here at moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, hey guys, forgive me, but this is a free class uh, designed to also raise awareness to our other services. So if you like this class, you can learn more about M3 Active Trader and getting our indicators for free. Lots of information here. I give weekly trade picks and daily updates. I do trade. This is my setup here. I've got more monitors off to the side. So uh, we actually do trade and uh, lots of feedback testimonials. Haven't added to these in years. There's so many we can't keep up. But um, anyway, we do know what we're doing. 
All right, with that, uh, let's see, just unpacking this. So again, this would coincide with what I showed on the IBIT. If the IBIT comes back to retest the gap I showed, right? Do you guys wanna see that again? That would be this gap down here would indicate, so again, the IBIT four hour tends to give signals where Bitcoin prices will go. This is my opinion and I have yet to, let's see, I don't wanna say it that way. Uh, it is. It has yet to be disproven. There's, there's probably a hundred of these gaps that have all been filled. Point being, if there's a gap down here, the likely price is gonna come fill that. Is it 100% accurate? Well, it has not happened. It has not not happened yet. Uh, statistically not, you know, until it until it happens, we'll still use it. High probability this does happen. So price come down on the IBIT would coincide with this article saying retesting 54K. Um, I would be okay with that. I have buy limit orders in uh, at 52K and 52, 50K. I had a buy order in limited 54K, which got filled, but I would rather buy more Bitcoin at 52K and 50K. All right, so and so this is interesting. So this this is very well. I couldn't plan this any better. Bitcoin future CME gaps have been filled by price every time over the last quarter, and, and typically they filled ninety eight percent of all gap fills. The last, the only one I can find that hasn't filled was back at ninety eight seventy five on Bitcoin, and so all of the CME gaps on Bitcoin have also filled. A lot of theories about this. I have my own. We won't get into it, but there's a high, high correlation of these gaps filling, not only on the CME of, for Bitcoin, that stands for Chicago Mercantile Exchange, right, but also on the IBIT. I'm, I'm repetition, mother of all learning. If you do nothing else, though, on Bitcoin, watch that four-hour IBIT chart and look for those gaps to fill. So really interesting. We might have discovered something that, uh, and, and look, it, it doesn't mean it's always going to work. Well, when more and more people catch on, then things become less effective. But for now, it's working. All right, uh, let's see. They are talking about position 50-week EMA. This is also correct, which I mentioned. You know, we're below the 50-week EMA. Uh, I always call that, it's uh, the analogy is it's the thick ice. You know, if you fall under the ice in a lake, uh, you you know, you want to know, is it safe to go on the lake? Is the ice thin or is the ice thick? Well, if it's thick ice and you go underwater, it's going to be resistance, harder to get back out. So that's, uh, we'll show that in the charts, right? So the bullish traders, hopeful the impending rate cuts, historically favorable market conditions in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, so, so that's the nuance. Um, in the fourth quarter, we see that happen. Rate cuts typically rally. However, um, well, I saw a chart recently. So um, over time, though, and, and not in the fourth quarter, rate cuts uh, will see a pullback. And so we saw that happen when Bitcoin went from 6,000 to 3,000. That was after a rate cutting cycle, and then it took off. So we have to be somewhat cautious of the fact we could go lower and then higher, lower than higher. So we really have to watch these clues. Fortunately, we have some of the best clues with our crypto mastery uh, signals. And if that's all you'd like to learn about, you can go here over into the uh, crypto mastery on our website, cryptomastery.org. Our pro signals, though, crypto slash highly recommend you go watch CEO and that'll show you everything. I'm going to show you some of it today in real time use, but this covers it pretty well. This will give you an edge for sure. Our M3 traders, everyone who's using these, love these indicators. Some of them are, all of them are pri proprietary, rather, the rocket, the early reversal indicator. I'm going to show you some of these. And so let's stop talking about it and let's do that. Anything else I want to see? CME gap four is at 54K. We'll look at that also. And uh, so this also shows we should see a bit of a pullback uh, at 254K because Bitcoin currently trading at 56, almost 57K, uh, hitting some resistance here at the 21 day EMA. But you see this area right in here? I know I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but we have three, you know, back to the ice analogy, the, the thickest ice is that 200 day. So we're below the 21 day, the 50 day and the 200 day exponential moving average. And we're breaking below this upward trending trend channel. But to be honest, that just means this has been invalidated, invalidated rather. What we are looking for in all of this is looking for when it does create a new upward trending channel. But unfortunately, we are still in a downward 
uh, let's see. It says my screen sharing is paused. And uh, I don't know why that happened, you guys. Sorry, I should have been checking that. And let me see this again. I'm going to do. Um, OK. <clears throat> All right. Sorry about that. So I don't have a way to be alerted. <clears throat> I'm out of the office. And so basically, can you guys tell me, by the way, what did you not what were you not seeing? Uh, let me just get some chat because I want to make sure that you guys are following. So we have can't see the chart, still see the news chart. So, OK, so sorry, you guys. Uh, which ticker trading symbols. Usually I don't want to get interrupted by the chat. And so here we go. Here we go. All right. Well, now you can see the charts. Can you confirm? Yeah. You know what that might have been? Uh, this this Zoom platform, all this technology, it's confusing, it's tricky. And and, and the reason we started late today is uh, the background you see here had inadvertently deleted. We have to download it again. Uh, on the screen share, uh, I had done the tab. All right, so we're back in business. Well, here, let me show you what, what we were talking about. Sorry, you guys. Um, real quick, let's go to the uh, <clears throat> the IBIT. I had shown this here, the IBIT gap right down in this range, okay? And that's what I had forecasted. Sure enough, price came back down. And uh, to fill this gap, we have a new gap right here. I will pull up a new chart. What I'm suggesting is this signals that the IBIT will come and fill this gap and similarly, Bitcoin will come down and fill its CME gap. All right, so let me just catch everybody up. And when I'll go down to this list here, the CME is this one, BTC1 exclamation point. And uh, so where is there a CME gap? I don't see a CME gap unfilled. We have, we have an unfilled gap to the upside. They're saying down to 54k. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's right. I don't see this. Usually, usually the daily CME gap. There is one above us, so that's interesting. All right. So I hear you guys. So which way do we go? Right. Uh, we will. Go, let's just dive into the charts. I think that's enough. I mean, I could we skim this. So what are they saying? Uh, let's see, see, gap forms 54k. I don't see that. And cryptocurrency, I think this is wrong. Either way, it's not significantly 54. Well, that's such a small gap, it's in, immaterial. Um, it's a big Bitcoin CME gap, I don't see it. Look at this tiny little gap. Come on, you guys. And that is, is that, uh, that's a four hour chart. No, 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 no. Daily gaps, don't give me a four hour. Even though the Bitcoin, all right, well, even though the iBit, we're using a four-hour chart. I won't rule it out, but typically CME gaps are on a daily time frame. Uh, so, <clears throat> and the only other thing I'll talk about, liquidation heat maps. And so they're saying key levels are around 54K. This means that leverage longs have piled in around 54K with leverage longs. We do know that a lot of the, the big drops are when they're refreshing the markets or wiping out and liquidating the big, the big, uh, traders and the levels so we can see this so basically our order block indicator is a simple version of this because this is a lot of noise but we can see all of the buy limit orders down here in the 54 region but this is suggesting because of the amount of leverage that uh these are liquidation heat mats these become magnets as well coinciding with the CME gap. So, 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 um, you know, basically the TLDR on that is the IBIT gap is coinciding with liquidation heat maps and the CME gap on a four hour chart. Ergo, we should pull back down and retest, which I was suggesting anyway, in our private M3 chat, I think we could pull back and retest this. So, um, now the, some people are saying 45 K I'm not going to talk about that today. There's a fairly well-known trader who's done very well and uh, recently had a two and a half million dollar loss. He publicly admitted because he was short heavily, maintaining that Bitcoin would go back to 44k. Why 44k? That's the open, the yearly open, and typically it retests. We'll talk more about that in M3 Active Trader tomorrow. 
All right, so the, right now we have too much of this could be, would be, might this, might that. Uh, all right, that means they don't know. All right, let's jump over and let me just make sure we still have everybody and you guys could follow along a little of that. And where's this chat still? Yeah, Zoom, everybody, you know, as you think in this day and age, the uh, technology would be uh, more solid. Uh, I did want to, hold on a second. Um, I know this was a little spat between uh, uh, good old Peter Schiff and uh, Michael, Michael strategy, as we call him. Let's get into the charts, everybody. That's what everyone's waiting for. So basically here on this chart of the total market cap, let's start here. And you can see that I have the buy zone and sell zones marked. These are our order block indicator. So you can see it's like peeling behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz and seeing visually where are the where is the buy pressure and sell pressure. And this comes directly from the exchange. Um, it can vary somewhat by exchange. Now, you might be saying, well, this is the total market cap. Where is that coming from? This is aggregate sell data from altcoins from all over. And I don't know if it's every single currency. That would be a lot of data, but essentially it's a good surrogate. So, so we have some really strong headwinds above. If we can break higher, we have a lot of resistance up in this range and up, up to even to the 3 trillion mark, which is where the old market cycle high was. All right, so what we can see right now, however, let me unpack this. I just did a study of this over on the uh, trading view, by the way. So initially we thought I we have a, a head and shoulders forming. Let me do a bars pattern and we can look at this together. I gotta move my video out of the way. And sorry guys, let's see, let's see turn, turn. This is, uh, where are the, here. Okay, so let's go back in time and um, Oh, I can't do bar replay on a total market cap. Who knew? All right. So what I'm looking at here, let me zoom out for everyone so you can see this and it's clear. And there we go. So this a couple things happening here. We looked at, I thought might have an inverse head and shoulders. Uh, last week, I had drawn this left shoulder, head and shoulder. So we this has been invalidated now. I'll take this off the chart. Actually, I'll leave that on there for M3 class tomorrow, but we'll look at it again. But we have a, uh, a new retest, not a lower low. So this structure could still, this is what I drew. I drew this blue arrow yesterday, everybody. Before all this, we just spent the last half hour on, I think we drop again to retest in the buy zone, potentially down in this range, and then we rock it up higher. The big question mark is this. Uh, this downward trending trend channel, we correctly called this as a top based on our early reversal indicator. And uh, and we caught that bounce down to here. Now, here's what's concerning. Uh, lower highs coming in and it's not as bad as lower lows, right? Uh, we have a, a, the we have this probability of a uh, this kind of thing forming. I'll take this line out. So essentially, we have this kind of a wedge forming, and but I'm suggesting that we we push up and reject here potentially. Why? Because we have that 2150 and 200 day EMAs. So, but if we get a good bounce off of here, the analogy I use is jumping off the roof onto the trampoline. I don't know if you guys ever did that uh, as kids, but um, uh, anyway, you understand <laughs> some of uh, uh, some of us did. But anyway, to the whole to the higher the drop and the higher the bounce. So basically, I think we reject here, which we are doing, and then we come back and bounce high up to this point. This is a big question mark. We'd have to clear this sell zone. With that being said, though, I did also just put out a chart on the macro bull flag, okay, on this total market cap. And let me show that to you because, and let me see if I already have that drawn. I, uh, I will draw it again. Uh, and let me take this warning down. So basically, let me do this. I'll pull this right out of the M3 Active Trader chat because that way I can have to duplicate it. And that'll give you a chance to see some of the chat. If we get daily chat in the Active Trader, trade recommendations, very active community. I'm in here every day, like I said, and a lot more involved here. Uh, let's see, is this the total market cap inverse head and shoulders? I just talked about that. So what you're hearing today, actually posted uh, yesterday in there, the chart I'm looking for shows a massive bounce. Here it is, everybody. On the total market cap, okay, if we were to get this type of a breakout on the bull flag, macro bull flag. So if we get the bounce that I'm sharing with you now, 
and it has the strength to break this downward trending upper boundary and we can break through that 2.6 trillion mark okay you should, i'm going to get on the edge of my seat here so you should do the same the measured move on this 4.8 trillion so i'm leaning much stronger toward a massive rally through the end of q4 into december maybe january then I'm not so sure. This could happen fairly quickly, and, and maybe it does extend into 2025. Uh, there are some, uh, we, we cover some varying opinions in the M3 Active Trader. Do we see a huge push now and a deflationary bust? Or do we see lower prices sooner than later? But that's not what I'm seeing here. And I'll be watching very carefully if we get a early reversal indicator and our TSI goes green out of the bottom of this on a weekly time frame, because that's when we see the biggest moves. And if you look right here, you see this arrow? Uh, that coincided with our, this is our early reversal indicator. When it coincides with our trend strength indicator, massive moves happen like this big bull run. So these arrows here have not really been validated. These were good for swing trades. I'm looking for a nice bottom. Incidentally, the, the, the early reversal indicator, this arrow right here was an accidental discovery that we made. I believe it catches institutional and programmatic buying. And that's why it's been so effective at catching bottoms and also tops. This was our top as I mentioned, we had, I put out an alert to M3 and retire rich members that, hey, guys, we should be going higher here, but the, our bearish market top signals just fired and people got out of the market and, and, and prevented this whole drop. So if, they, if you'd like that, you definitely want to be in our M3 class and have access to these indicators. Okay. So with that, um, we are on the same page. So that these are what I think are uh, we will see. Let's see. Trump Harris debate uncertainty, putting pressure on stocks and crypto. One thing markets do not like is uncertainty. So uh, with that, uh, we will we will uh, uh, we'll have to see what happens. Let's see. I see some comments here. And Perry says, at what point does the sideways chop actually stop being a flag? And instead, yeah, exactly. Uh, thanks, Perry. And I did mention that once or twice. Um, the bear flag, I'm uh, sorry, bull flag, all flag patterns generally uh, have resolved by now. And, um, you know, it's a fair comment. Is it a downward trending channel or is it a bull flag? And that all depends on if it can break out of the channel and the channel maintains its, uh, the, uh, what do you want to call it? The boundaries of the channel. So, uh, and I have to say that, um, I, you know, I've been very good at calling major market tops and bottoms. Those of you know, um, I know that. But I've been saying for six months or longer, this one is the hardest. It is the hardest. And we have a lot of uncertainty when we, when we couldn't break all-time high again on the third attempt and or the fifth attempt here also breakouts usually happen on the third or fifth attempt when this failed as well I, I had a strong feeling we'd come down so we either are in a downward trending channel right or we have a descending broadening wedge a descending broadening wedge is still bullish and and, and if we use the the candle bottoms you know, but we have lower highs coming in. So this is really tough. These are the two scenarios I think are most likely. I already drawn this. I would not be buying this, uh, this bounce. I would, in fact, I may take some profits off this with the intent of buying lower again. But uh, these are the two scenarios. I think we come back and retest 54K, as that article already said. But I posted this yesterday in M3 Active Trader. Uh, maybe the day before, or if we do break that and we get a, a wick down, if we have, I, 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 and again, we do cover this extensively in M3 Active Trader, I have buy limit orders, as you can see right there, 52K and 50K on the Bitcoin. I'd love to get another wick down like this one, you know, into our buy block because we know there's buy orders on the order books here. And the wider and taller that is, the more buying pressure. Worst case scenario, we come back down to 45K, as the other article said, but uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, you know, but either way, a wick down into this range, both on Bitcoin and Solana, I'm a buyer. 
I'm a swing trade buyer. I'll still be selling up in this range, most likely, uh, some of it. And we talk about this in much more detail on other classes. So I'm just trying to give you guys a full picture on that, not to make it a commercial, but um, uh, you know, this is a general class to use our indicators. So let me show you those. And this is not the right chart there. If you guys have any other questions on what I'm showing you, let me know. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about this. Where are the signals? There we go. I'll uh, go full screen on this for you. So basically what I was suggesting, and this is a daily chart, we, we will use this on a daily and weekly time frame. So we had an early reversal indicator right here. See that ERI? And we had that in line with this going green. These are two of our strongest signals. So I, I'm encouraged by this, but the overall structure is bearish. So I think we could push up for a day or two, and then we see a rollover. CPA data, PPA data, that's the wild card. That's tomorrow and the next day. Uh, when in doubt, stay out. So I wouldn't be really making a lot of decisions right now anyway. But this is bullish. So this trend strength indicator breaking above 20 is a bullish sign. And um, I am going to pull up our trade success checklist in a moment, which you can download for free at our website at moonstream.io. The trade success checklist lets you navigate your trade and interactively we've gamified it a little bit. So when every scenario that we outlined there, whether it's the ERI goes green or the TSI goes green, you'll put a checkbox next to it and it will incrementally increase or decrease your trade success score, giving you that confidence and clarity and in many cases, the courage to take that trade. So let's unpack that for a bit because I think if you get nothing else out of this and a lot of this, uh, we invite our Crypto Mastery members here for training, when you're using these signals, they're validated when you get an ERI. I'll turn these other ones off for now. Confluence is key, so you could, these make it more prevalent. But for now, we're just looking for ERI going green and the TSI going green. So you see this down in here, ERI arrow, the early reversal indicator, trend strength indicator over 20, caught this nice little rally up here. And then we had the inverse, red, red going below 80. We saw the drawdown. Then when now we have a bullish ERI and we have the TSI green above 20. So generally that will follow through. So I think we could see a rally up in this area, but I think this danger zone uh, is, is a bit wider. So what do we do next? Uh, we look at the weekly. I'm gonna move my video over to the top left. I'm not sure if that moves it for you guys. So the, the key here is to go to a weekly time frame. And uh, if we get the same signals on a weekly, generally a longer follow through. What I'm very bullish about, not quite yet, but it's, it's setting up very nicely. Let's just say for October is a weekly ERI and TSI bounce. Okay, ignore this little uh, image there. So well, the last time we had these aligned, the last two times we've had these aligned, um, I think on the total market cap, we did have the ERI back in here, but I had already called 16.5 as the bottom. I predict, I forecast that back in May of the prior year. So we nailed the bottom and uh, where we were fully going bullish on a monthly time frame, we did have an arrow here, by the way. I'll show you that in a moment. But a secondary chance, look at this, our ideal criteria, we had the price back above the 21.50 and 200 day EMA on the ERI Pro, Throwing a lot of acronyms at you guys. EMA is exponential moving averages. ERI is our early reversal indicator. This green block is money flow. That's our, on our pro version. But we got above the exponential moving averages, retested, and then we had our early reversal indicator on the weekly. Okay, and then we had the trend strength indicator on the weekly. Boom, that was that first leg of this potential bull flag. Now, on Bitcoin, it's a bit of a janky bull flag. It's more of a descending, broadening wedge. So I am deferring to the total market cap, which is the leader, by the way. Uh, if you want to look at an interesting study, just go to the total market cap on the weekly time frame or daily. The top of the market in 2021, people always talk about Bitcoin. Look at the total market cap. It hit $3 trillion, and that was it. Those big round numbers on the total market cap, both on the support level, 1 trillion, 2 trillion, 3 trillion, 
so so that's where we want to pay attention to as well. Uh, here on Bitcoin, <clears throat> coming back into this, uh, what was I saying? So what I'm encouraged by the fact is that if we do pull back and go lower again, okay, and we bounce hard out of the buy block zone, this green box, because the trend strength indicator is still showing momentum down on the weekly time frame. When that reverses and starts to push up above 20 and go green, we're, that's when we'll see that next big leg of the rally, I believe. So we have a little more chop, and hopefully it answers your question, Perry. So short-term daily basis, I think we push up, probably reject on this again, come back down into this. We see our TSI come down in this range and then go green, and then, then it's go time. How am I playing it? I'm still buying on these dips into the buy blocks using our buy order block indicator. Everyone got it? Okay, I know it's a lot, but that's why you come to these classes. The more times you see it, the more it, uh, you, it becomes real uh, and you learn it uh, because repetition, mother of all learning. So the next one here, and I'll get to the trade success checklist in a moment. Now, uh, for, in terms of congruency and uh, having um, confluence, always add, always helps. So we're also waiting for our signal line. These are all different algos, you guys. And those of you who don't know, Joe, our um, algorithmic trading wizard, trader and programmer, professional trader, um, Joe, he builds automated automated trading systems on the S&P, and uh, he's the creator and co-creator of these uh, great signals that we use for crypto. And so once we see this again, uh, the signal line going green on a weekly time frame, you know, I'm going to go back to the daily for now, but because that is a, a near shorter term signal, then that's another sign that will go higher and on that trade success checklist, you'll see in a moment, we'll check that box and that'll increase the score. The other one, now one of our newest indicators that we love is the RSI Pro. So let me just hide this for now. Uh, and I'll just say that there are certain patterns that we follow that if these four criteria happen, uh, we're in the market, we're in. And that would be the ERI, the TSI, which we have that already. So that's a two out of 21 potential score. Uh, but we we have the RSI. We have not seen that turn and put a green dot in. Now, these show bullish and bearish divergences. So we saw a bearish divergence back in July before that drop. We saw major ones back here earlier in the year before that drop. Now, we saw some bullish divergences back early August as we've pushed up. Really kind of inconclusive here on that, that daily. Let's see what the weekly shows because again, that gives us those longer term timeframes. We're not quite there yet. We are seeing bullish divergence here and uh, I won't go into that too much, but those green circles are good. And if we wanna go bullish, red circles down. Is this, is this making sense, you guys? How many of you are new and this is the first time you've seen these? All right, well, what I'm gonna do now is also put on another indicator of ours called the uh, radar, the multi time frame radar. And then we'll look at our rocket and our average true range uh again you know there's no one indicator that is all is 100 percent. we add in different ones to add to the probability of a successful trade so the higher the score on these the the more chances that it will be in our favor so our radar is a multi-time frame radar this is based on uh, typical indicators that the institutions use and joe knows that as a professional trader a modified stochastics RSI. So on the daily time frame, uh, we're bullish. This tells the same story as what I was just saying. Bullish on the daily, so we could get a further bounce up into say just under 60k. That's what I think happens, and then we roll over because the weekly and the monthly bearish doesn't mean it can't change, but on a quarterly basis, bullish. So you know, like I think if we push up, pull back, and shoot higher, that fits the narrative of what we are proposing. All right, what else can we look at? Let's look at our Bollinger Bands. Uh, that's not kind of probably register. I'm going to do this on a different chart um, because um, it's going to be a bit messy here. I do want to show the average true range. Uh, now, this is a can be used as a dynamic stop loss or a buy-sell indicator. You can see we've been in a lot of chop all through here. But one of the confirmations of a macro bull move is something like this where we're kind of sideways exit mode, and then we go entry mode, especially if it coincides with uh, our other signals when we're already in, it's a confirmation signal. So right now we're still bearish on the uh, ATR. I'm, I'm, my computer's bogging down a little bit. 
and let me turn some of these off. So we won't talk about that really this week because it's not relevant. Um, anything else that we want to look at, you guys? We have this uh, rocket indicator that uh, is great for showing short-term pushes higher in the near term. Uh, those are sort of less frequent, but when we see them, they're great. We'll see if we can find one before we jump off. And uh, so, so that's all I really wanted to show you guys here on Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Solana. If you guys ha would like me to look at anything else, uh, we're coming up on the hour. And uh, so we try to keep these to about an hour. Uh, Perry says, Ave, sure, we can look at that. How do the screener and radar look? Hey, I, I didn't see that, but I read your mind, Perry. Um, the, uh, the, the screener won't get into today because um, we, we, well, I guess we could. Uh, radar, uh, Polka Trump, Trump, Trump Peters says, Fetch coin. Y you know, the thing about Fetch is until it's completed and the new ASI token comes out, and those of you who don't know, Fetch is merging with Ocean and Ajax. Uh, I think it's going to be great, but it's confusing because the conversion from Fetch coin or Fetch token to ASI is not automatic on all exchanges. Like Coinbase, you have to sort of do some maneuvering, I guess, on the wallet. And like, I just don't want to deal with that. So I'm out of Fetch. I'm waiting for the ASI token conversion. Uh, I'm happy to pull up the chart. We'll look at that in a minute. And let's see some other comments here. Sideways so Chop talked about 45K depends on how much is loaded up. Uh, yeah, Perry, who knows? <clears throat> you know, it's a conjecture at this point. All right, let's take, let me go through just a couple things. We'll get over to Ave and then uh, we'll touch on Fetch. ETH, however, I said, uh, I'm not really super bullish on ETH. Uh, you know, we are down in this buy zone. I do have, I did have some buy limit orders, which may have already filled. And... Uh, guys, I'm on a on not the best Wi-Fi, so if I'm speaking and pushing data, if it's uh, cutting it out at all, uh, just catch the replay. So, so this is interesting, though. Um, often I'll make a determination and then look to invalidate it. And here, what do you guys see? What do we see here? So we have a bullish early reversal indicator. So one of my buy limit orders was at twenty one fifty. So I'm in. So I've been filled on ETH and it's already in profit. That's why I love using buy limit orders in these buy blocks. If you use nothing else and you buy in the buy blocks and you sell in the sell blocks, usually the midpoint, you're golden. But we're narrowing that down. I think ETH actually looks pretty good here. Has more room to run. We have the trend strength indicator, hence the name trend strength. So it's coming up from below above 20. This is a confirmation signal, and we have our RSI showing bullish divergence in this circle. So ETH actually uh, now is looking good. I, did, I didn't like it back here because I expected this drop, but now that we've had that drop uh, and my limit orders have filled, I also have buy limit orders at uh, 2,000. Um, you can see this. I have that already set. If, if for any reason uh, we get a big scary CPI print and we wick down 2,000 on Ether, hey, uh, I'll buy and hold that for as long as possible. Uh, I think uh, we'll get to a 10K ETH, 15K ETH. So that's a 5X, 7X, 7.5X. Uh, um, so, you know, so you guys make your own determinations. Let me see what the signal line does. Signal line is about to turn green. So I, I'm liking ETH more and more here. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at Solana, which uh, I do like quite a bit. And also the Sol, uh, the Sol ETH trade has been going up nicely. And uh, those of you trading alternate pairs, we'll look at that. We did put that trade alert on Sol ETH last week. So um, in terms of this, I'll go full screen. And so we have the, we don't have an RSI bullish on Sol, but we have the ERI and the TSI. What I love about Sol here, though, is look how many times this 125 level has been respected. And, and let me do this for you guys. I'll turn off the ERI for a moment because it does make the chart a bit honorary. And I'm just going to show you the price action. Okay. So what is this chart really telling? Every chart tells a story. Every coin has its own personality and backstory. So this 125 level was prior resistance. Okay. And if we go back farther, I don't know, it may have been more, but it doesn't really matter. This is more relevant. So what we saw is a big push up on Sol right in here and broke 125 resistance and came back and tested it as support. Love those structures. 
And so what that, that means is a big player came in and loaded up on Sol. Now, they likely took some profits up in this range. Can't blame them. But look how many times that 125 level has been respected. And I have this level as a buy. But once it retested as support, one, two, three, four, five, typically breakouts and breakdowns happen on the third or the fifth attempt, in my experience, 25-year trader. So I am highly confident that this level holds. And sure enough, we're holding 125 here again. The only cause for concern, lower highs, lower highs in here and some sell pressure above 160. But that's a swing traders bet. I might take some profits at 160 and up at 200. But on any subsequent higher lows, I'll be loading the boat and buying it back in again as a swing trader. I have buy limit orders unfilled at 120, although that might have been filled. I don't know. Sometimes these things, even though they don't show it, it looks like I just shy of it about 120. And 69 cents. So, so that's why, while I love round numbers, sometimes you, you know, have to maybe put a little bit higher to get filled. So I have buy limit orders at 120, 115, 110, and at 100. Happy to buy it anywhere along in here uh, for the longer term bounce. Look at all these buy orders in there. And uh, I don't even have to use our signals now, but it is, it is relevant that the TSI is going green. All right. So with that, uh, maybe what we'll do is... Uh, download the trade success checklist as we look at Ave and then we'll look at fetch. How about that? Uh, let's see. Ave uh, is on Coinbase now. I didn't know that. That's good news. Uh, Ave has been, look, Ave is a profitable business and they are doing great. Look at this. Ave is looking great. Now it's, I would say this is the perfect opportunity to test one of our other great indicators, the Bollinger Band. Uh, I will submit. And, if, and once you see this long enough that we're hitting the upper Bollinger Band, I'm just going to guess. But we are certainly hitting uh, and some recent support. Now, here's the key. Ave will likely sell off today. I would not chase this here. I'd be taking some profits here and uh, wait for a subsequent pullback into this buy range because I think this probably pulls back under 143, 144 because the prior wicks have as well. So that's some key resistance. And let's look at, a, look at our Bollinger Band. Okay, I was off by a little bit. But see, our Bollinger Band Pro... Uh, you guys have probably heard of Bollinger Bands before. The standard Bollinger Band is useless with crypto. Uh, we have created our own with different settings. And as you can see, it works very, very well. On the upper band, especially when it turns red, that means it's become overextended and is likely to revert to the, the mean. Uh, the 21-day EMA is pretty close to the normal Bollinger Band median. So I just turned that off. But here, every time it touched or got near touching that Bollinger Band, pulled back, up above, pulled back, up above, pulled back. You can see it all the way through here. And uh, my, my good friend Steve Nissen taught me that uh, typically when one part of the band hits, price will typically go to the extreme, opposite extreme. So on the bullish side, we see this vertical green line down in here became oversold. Great buying opportunity for Ave. It went sideways, 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 and then it shot up to the upper band. Um, so at any rate, and we can see this also hitting the upper band, pulled back to the median. So um, if Abe pumps today to 150, I'd take profits there. Always hold a moon bag, but I would submit that by the end of today, especially going to uh, CPI numbers, probably see some profit taking, pulling it back below here and probably pull back to the 21 day exponential moving averages. Any other clues? Not so much on our other indicators, but people ask me all the time, when do you take profits? At hitting the upper Bollinger Band, and the beauty of these indicators, you guys, is you can set alerts on these. So let's do that. Add alert at the uh, Bollinger Band, and um, yeah, plot zero, one, and two. Plot zero is the upper Bollinger Band, and plot one is the median, plot two is the lower. So I'm gonna leave that on that, and so there we go. And all of this noise, you can change and just say, Okay, upper BB hit sell. Okay. All right. So you can do alerts on all of these signals. All right. Um, anything else? There's not much more I would look at in Ave except for look at that larger time frame. When in doubt, zoom out. So um, it's certainly an interesting price. And this price level was prior support. So that's good. And 
you know, it's good to be. So I'm, I'm bullish on Ave once it can break and hold above this, but you see also what's happening. Uh, and, and on that Bollinger band on a weekly recently hit did pull back. See this little blue line right there. That is the 200 week EMA. Okay. That is significant. We'll act as resistance until it gets above there. But look at all that sell pressure. Now, this is part of the aggregate total market cap sell blocks. Okay, it's sort of calculated. I would say probably the top 200 coins, probably, you know, maybe it's top five. I don't know. I'll have to ask Joe about that. But it comes from the data providers. Uh, and so uh, maybe may vary. It doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm suggesting, though, is um, I want to know, and I'm going to set an alert when Ave gets above 160, because I like to buy into strength. I want to see uh, this thing hold 160, which would be above the 200 week EMA, because the weekly charts show more momentum, have more follow through. So my alert, I'm going to say buy question mark, question mark, 200 EMA break, breakout. Whatever. I, I do recommend you put your uh, uh, your alerts and name them so when they fire, you know what, what it means. So uh, so but but overall, Avi looks good here. And the other thing that I would uh, except for the short term, I think we see a pullback. It's hitting that upper Bollinger Band. Um, the other thing, though, that we like to do are these parallel channels, as you guys know, who are in M3. Um, you know, like just kind of tells the whole story. I'm a fan of simplicity over complexity. Uh, except when it comes to Zoom, let's see. And um, where is it to here? A, a big clue on Ave, by the way. And but in, in on the retire rich forty coins to really watch. My criteria is breaking out of a downward trending channel and coming out of a buy block. Typically, we're seeing a lot of those. Uh, and again, there's some twenty five x, forty x, fifty x. Uh, I've identified on that list and 100x uh, on that list. So we are well positioned on the retire rich portfolio. All right. Uh, so the fact that it's no longer in a downward trending channel, it is still in a sideways channel. I'll teach you guys something new, by the way, that you may not have heard. This is an oldie, but goodie. Learned this 25 year, years ago. And the sideways price action is called gas in the tank. The longer a coin just goes sideways, sideways, and you know, in the later scheme of things, it's gonna look like this. Uh, the chop is a bit wider than I'd like, but the longer it consolidates, when it does break out, the higher it generally goes. It has more gas, uh, hopefully that makes sense. But right now, we're still in the sideways chop. I'd buy out and a pullback. I wouldn't chase it here. All right, so what else did we say? Um, let's, I keep teasing you guys with the uh, trade success checklist. Let's do that with the other one, fetch coin. And again, uh, fetch is still showing up as the fetch coin token. Let me just double check price. Uh, it is still trading. They haven't converted to ASI yet. That is, uh, so today, September 10th. So just judging from this, and let me see if it's a good candidate. Yeah. So um, let's do this, you guys. I want to make sure this is focused on trading as well. All right. Good candidate here uh, for the trade success checklist. Uh, because I'm burning a lot of bandwidth here, though, I'm going to, I have to move this out of the way. I'm going to close some other tabs here, you guys. And uh, so that um, uh, this uh, laptop here is spinning away here, bingo. And the trade success checklist you can download right here on our website. And I'm gonna just go straight to the, the check, uh, the download. Okay, free. Okay, um, preferably you guys download it, give us your information, then we'll send you other bonuses and, and, uh, and news updates and things like the newsletter and market updates on occasion. Okay, so the market trace checklist, interactive ver version of and somewhere, download. Uh, download it as a PDF and you'll open the PDF. That's how you get the interactive ability Oops, look at that, I blew it. it. It opened and I didn't give it time enough to open. So uh, any questions, you guys, let me re-download this. And strange how 
uh, wife so buried. I was to the class from the beaches. Those of you here remember, and uh, on very questionable Wi-Fi, it worked great. But for some reason here at my beach house, uh, we're getting the pool redone, uh, is cannot um, get on it as much. So what happened there? Oh, okay. So here's what we do. Open up here. I'm on a Mac. I use Mac and PC. Mac when I'm traveling. Uh, and here it is. So there we go. Quick check on this. There, interactive. Okay, so keep that in mind. And let me do this. We'll go back and forth. So we're going to do this trade. We're going to evaluate this trade together on Fetchcoin even though, again, I'm waiting for the conversion. So uh, looking at all things being equal, okay, what do we have? Well, we have a fresh ERI right there, that arrow. Uh, and by the way, because I hadn't mentioned it, some of you might be more experienced trader and say, saying, oh, that's cute, uh, red arrow, green arrow. Uh, there's a lot of quant um, work behind these. We have the oscillator version, which you get access to as well. And we explain why it works, but I said to Joe, it's visually very painful to look at. Can you make a green arrow, red arrow when the criteria hit? It has to do with price movements from a certain area to a certain area within three time periods. And we have a Keltner band built into this equation. Fair enough. Um, just don't want you to think this is a nice, cute toy. This is very effective, uh, but especially when used, it's deadly effective when used with our TSI together. Okay, so what does that mean? We have a green arrow. Is the Here's the trade success checklist. So is the ERI showing green up arrow? Check, so we hit that button. And right away down the bottom of the page here, your trading success score is one out of 21. Obviously more the better. Anything over two or three, I think is worth getting into a trade. As you get higher, adding to the trade. Professionals build positions. They don't go all in and all out. Amateurs do that, and that's why retail traders get wrecked. As your probability increases, as your risk decreases, you should invest more uh, accordingly. And and um, you know, not financial advice, but uh, generally makes sense. So the second box here is that TSI green and above the 20 line, right? You've seen this before. And again, um, different criteria it's not the same indicator repackaged no it's different so the que the answer is yes we had the tsi go green yesterday this is confirmed by this is a confirmed uh buy on uh fetch except again don't do this uh just on the signals i would say normally this is a yes but we're waiting for that conversion maybe i should have done this on ave so it's not confusion but just from an educational standpoint this is what we look for on on any of the coins and all of these you can set alerts on so that yeah, the next time you see a green signal above 20 all you want to do and uh, hit add alert and you can say uh, here i would just do it as uh, at crossing above 20 boom and that'll fire the next time we could have got it yesterday <clears throat> that would have been nice but for example purposes, so we have now, what do we have? We have two, okay, on there. And then as the signal line turned from red to green, so basically two, we go to the bottom of the page, we have two out of 21 is better than one out of 21. Yes or yes. Uh, is that right? So, uh, sorry, I went into seminar mode there for a second. Yes or yes. Uh, forgive me. Um, and the the um, next one is the signal line. Now our signal line is going green, just barely. But it's green. So now what do we have? We have a line, a trade success score of three out of 21. If you're new, I recommend using this for a month or two or longer <clears throat> until you don't have, you just do that math in your head. So now we have a three out of 21. Let's pick up the pace. So the other one is, well, we have, we have a, another indicator called the trend indicator. I will pull it up. It's sort of, I won't see being replaced, but a, a newer version is the RSI Pro. But now all of these incorporate, you see this vertical green line. This means that on the trend indicator, okay, we have a bell. So I can just check that off without looking at the trend indicator. Many of our signals are multiple signals built into one, which also helps you with not having to buy the advanced trading view packages. That was the original impetus, three indicators in each one. Uh, so you don't have to uh, go and all in on the other indicator packages. All right. So now that I've said that, uh, we'll talk about the radar in a second. Let me just add in that trend indicator uh, so you can see that. And now that is different from the trend strength indicator. Trend indicator kind of gives the overall, uh, you know, when when to buy, how long is this thing going to run? 
and we have full training of that uh, on the inside of the um, training. Ignore all these indicators here that I'm showing you because we have various products that we use. You don't need all of those, right? Uh, like our vertical returns and some of the things we do with options, but I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, the Trend Pro. Okay, so here is the other one that I was suggesting. Now, the cool thing about the trend indicator is that you can see it gives these cool signals. It'll give you both a buy signal like the bell and a sell signal. Now, typically we have the first dollar sign is a good area to take some profits. I'll usually wait till, till the bag of money and look at how, how perfectly it nailed this trade, you guys. The key says, hey, a new trend may be forming, but, but, but wait for the bell. Now we have the midline go from red to green. Again, Joe's the genius who created this. I don't know what it means other than green is good. And kind of like Gordon Gecko, greed is good. Green is good. And we got the bell signal right here on, on August 19th on uh, Fetch. So the trade, now these are ba it's based on Tom DeMarc uh, number sequences and it's loosely. So number five is a dollar sign. Six, seven is the bag of money. So perfectly bought the breakout took profits here. The key says, hey, we might be getting another bell, but don't buy yet. Well, look at that. We pulled back and the bell was back lower. Uh, I did not follow through, but we do have a new key forming. Okay, so we'll want to keep an eye on that. I, I know it's a lot, you guys. You don't have to use all of these, but uh, do you like more profits or less profits? The more of these you check off, the more potential profits we've seen it. And we've been analyzing charts for years now with this. The more of these you check off, the more profit and potential is in the trade. So I've checked off trend indicator. Let's jump down to the radar here, a little ahead of ourselves. Is there a green radar? Yes, there is. Pick up the pace. There's a lot of different signals in here. Even if you're not using our indicators, things like bullish engulfing candles. Uh, do we have a bullish engulfing? No, but, but what do we have? Are we above the 21 and 50 day EMA? That's one of the signals. Yes, it is. And check that, is candle body at support? It is at support at the 50-day EMA, so we can check that off. So now we've got a very strong trade here, and uh, not the engulfing candle, the candle body at support. Uh, is it at a rising support trend line? You know, not so much rising, it's kind of flatlining, but these are all key things. Is it rising above a, a, a support trend line? Uh, it is, so this is another bullish signal within the scope of an overall questionable market. But look at that, breaking above resistance. So th these are all valid there. Now we have a 9 out of 21 score. This is a trade otherwise I would take on Fetch uh, if it weren't for that conversion. Uh, we'll talk about the vol index right now, uh, the rocket signal. We, we haven't seen um, on this. Tr we haven't seen recently, but maybe... Uh, there's certain criteria on that. I, I don't want to give people too much and get a brain hernia. The green buy blocks, this is money flow. We did talk about that when we saw those on Bitcoin, the huge signal that goes higher. The Bollinger Bands, uh, if it pushes down to that lower Bollinger Band, that's a bullish signal. We don't have that right now. And we could look at it real quick. All right, okay, keep moving this video out of the way. Where's the Bollinger Bollinger Bands, just give a second here. Now, but here's another clue, tightening Bollinger Bands. Now, the only bearish thing about this, though, I'd have to say, is we have sell blocks right above. We have the 200-day EMA right above. So we have some resistance. I do think it pushes up into this $1.40 range and then maybe pulls back and then goes higher. A lot of sell pressure up ahead. Point of this is to use these, the trade success uh, worksheet. If you see all green on the radar, very bullish sign. Daily, month, weekly, monthly, three weeks. That's a quarterly. Wait, that should say three months. Um, um, and you guys, you can change the default on your radar if you're a day trader or a swing trader. I should mention that these signals work equally as well on the shorter time frames. Okay, and uh, so we see sell pressure right overhead on uh, this fetch coin. So it's kind of been conclusive. When in doubt, stay out. Uh, you know, the big thing to do is try to be a flea on a big dog that's running recklessly in one direction you know hitch a ride like those fish that suck on the side of sharks and whales at any rate you can see here all of these when you get a trade success score over two or three i'd be in the trade and adding to it all the way along similarly on the bearish side uh these would would, would take a mark away from the trade score so i thought pretty much covers what we want to cover today how are we doing on time 
and I can't even see the time right here. Let me see if you guys more questions. Anything else, you guys? Let's see. Three new messages. Uh, Trend Pro Perry, we're I'm reading your mind today. You have the 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 chat underneath. So uh, let's see. Trend Pro. Um, something Bitcoin chart. We're on Fetch Coin now. Radar looks red bad on most coins from one week monthly three months. Yeah, I I think you you know that really coincides with. Uh, if we get a rally, when we get a rally, we'll have Bitcoin lead with ETH and Sol. And uh, later, as the Bitcoin dominance starts to roll over, we'll talk about this more in tomorrow's class. Then we'll see money flow into more into all ETH and Sol. And then as profit taking happens on ETH and Sol and maybe some of the other tier ones like Chainlink and Compound, you know, that's when the altcoins run. Uh, but uh, one of the things that is really sort of forgive the term, but that sort of castrated this uh, altcoin run was all of the money that normally would have pumped altcoins flooded into meme coins. Initially, that helped Solana because a lot of the new meme coins were on Sol. Part of the sell-off on Solana is that uh, that money has flowed out of the, you know, uh, altcoins into meme coins. I'm sorry, part of the drop in Sol is that a lot of that meme coin money pulled out. And uh, I wanted, I think there was something else I wanted to show you guys. Oh yeah, the, the Sol ETH trade. So let's take a look at this though. So this had a nice little run up. We caught this Solana ETH trade a couple days ago. I'd recommended it last week. Is that right? You guys correct me in M3. But uh, why was that ERI green? And, and let me open this up. We had TSI green. We have, look at this beautiful chart, Sol ETH. Basically means Solana outperforming ETH. I think this will even out here, which would make sense. ETH now looking good. Profit uh, sell blocks on Sol ETH up here, but nice little pump on that. Uh, and we have we have a key bell sequence. So actually, I would hold Sol ETH here. And but uh, when we let's take a look at what we, you know, sometimes it's okay. Close this to do some hindsight, and just to kind of measure how we would have done. So what so the signal I need to go? I guess I can grab it. So we kind of caught it in here somewhere, but that was a, so far, yeah, it's 7%, pizza sharp stick in the eye. It was a swing trade anyway. Uh, let me see if there's anything else we want to look at. Anything looking strong right now? Again, people are waiting for CPI tomorrow. We'll cover that uh, in class. Uh, helium continuing to run. Uh, and I did think we'd see some profit taking there, but look at that rising up on helium. And, uh, you know, the... Uh, the 21 day EMA, but our signals caught it, guys. Um, right back here, we had that bear, bullish engulfing, sorry, bullish ERI. And then we had that money flow come in. And then right after that, we had we had the TSI go green. Uh, you know, darn it, this hindsight. The problem is, I know we weren't watching it that closely. I know some one of our students, Alex, caught this early, and I did make a recommendation on this. Um, but but the signals let the signals guide you. It's like having a flashlight in in the dark. Now the problem with this chart, though, can anyone see it? I I I don't like when the radar is all red. I don't like it. Uh, I think this uh, this is a tricky one. This could certainly pump up to nine dollars here, but uh, I don't know that all red radar. Not not I mean, when in doubt, stay out, you guys. Not financial advice. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up. So, yeah, again, Perry reading my mind. Radar looks red. We already covered that. Red on most. This was all red. If it's all red, I'm out. If it's all green, I'm in. Uh, and typically, you'll see this <clears throat> with pro programmatic buying. I've been watching a chart with the radar. And as soon as they all went green, price pumped. Programmatic buying kicked in. So Joe's genius is knowing what the programmatic buyers and sellers use. And uh, that's what that radar is. Uh, let's see. Last question. Perry says, you think we'll have to wait till October for a better run or still September? Yeah, that's a good question, Perry. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm feeling that um, we'll see some volatility this week with CPI and PPI. And, um, you know, then uh, whether we sell back down again, which... I think probably happens either as a sell the news event or spooks the market. And then we go into FM, FOMC, maybe we get a half point cut. Markets start to rally then and October is the month. Um, so 
Yeah, I don't think September where we see the big run season seasonally. I, sh I show that every week in M3 Active Trader and uh, seasonally, uh, uh, September is a down month. Uh, and then um, uh, now November is typically rip roaring. So I think we'll, we'll really see some big gains November, December, maybe into January. But uh, but the time to position ourselves is now and any other pullbacks to those buy zones. Again, I'm focusing on Bitcoin, Sol, and ETH. Uh, and, and, and there's a few others we, that we're recommending in the M3 active trader class. But, um, you know, those are, that's for paying members. Hey, guys, uh, you know, um, I, I'd love to give it all away for free. But, you know, we have to maintain the sanctity of the group. And uh, you can see we, we're watching. We have our watch lists here. This is my personal watch list. But uh, in M3, we have our own watch list. In Retire Rich, we have our own watch list. Uh, looky there. There's an old Retire Rich coin finally rallying. ALI, you guys, uh, but it's probably hitting resistance up in this range. Uh, could be, sh you know, short covering. Not sure. Anyway, just taking a quick skim down through everything. You know, um, let's. I, I would certainly use your indicators. And if you don't have them yet, again, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro. Watch that video. We have a lifetime offer still on there because we've been too busy to take it down. And that price is going up. So it'll be going up. It's currently, it's going up to 2000 And it's less than that right now. It really should be 1797 but I don't know that we've changed it yet. So anyway, check that out, guys. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you flat out, uh, if you don't have these indicators, you are at a you're you're at a loss. You're at a disadvantage. We have an advantage. We've been fine tuning these. We do weekly trainings uh, here. Watch this video. It tells you everything you need to know about those pro indicators. They are that good, and we've been customizing and improving them. They're invite only, but once you sign up for them, you get access. There's training in a members area. And one trade, you guys, you can easily make that back or give it back on a bad trade because you didn't have the peak behind the curtain. You know, our Bollinger Band Pro is phenomenal for crypto. No one else has that. The order blocks, we've, we've, uh, there's other ones out there, but ours is better. And we have tons of testimonials. We've stopped even adding to them. Uh, and just because we're busy, you know, we haven't really had time to beef up this page. Watch the video, you guys. It's 30 minutes well spent. So if, you, if you're a trader and you just want the signals, go get these. Uh, if you want some more direction and coin picks, join our M3 Active Trader. You get the basic level of these indicators free, not the pro. But uh, you get the basics to start out. Uh, ideally, get them both. Uh, I mean, look, if we're looking to really find a rip roaring bull market, these are incidental costs. Uh, we're here every week training you guys. And uh, if you're more of a buyer and holder, uh, sign up for our newsletter or our retire rich class. Love to have you and help you guys. All right. That's all we have time for everybody. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, take care everyone. And um, yeah, good luck. We'll know more soon. We'll, we're going to may, may even do a live stream tomorrow during the CPA. I, although I think it's early morning. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's, it's kind of pointless to try and predict what happens because it's going to happen either way. We need to see how the market reacts, let the dust settle. I wouldn't be buying anything right now. I'd be waiting for this week kind of settle out a bit. Yeah, a magic eight ball says very exactly. Okay, guys, thanks. Uh, glad you enjoyed the class. And uh, we'll be going back to weekly classes here now that summer's over. And the big fancy traders uh, from Wall Street are back from their big houses in the Hamptons and have drank all their pina coladas that their liver can handle. And it's back to business. We will see volume back in these markets soon. But um, I have to also say that uh, looking at some of the stock charts like uh, Google and you know Google breaking down pretty significantly from its rising trend line, we could be seeing some trouble there. And uh, even NVIDIA is at a key support level. So, uh, you, you know, but I, at some point, I think we might see a flight to quality and money flowing into Bitcoin uh, and as, as maybe the less risky asset. My video is delayed here for a minute, uh, you guys. All right. Fat Cat Banksters return to Wall Street soon. Exactly, Perry. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll have the replay up here later today. And, um, uh, and um, we'll see you guys tomorrow in M3 Active Trader. Okay, I'll be back in the office uh, with all the big monitors and everything. So uh, look forward to that class. Okay, cheers, everyone. Bye.